Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 7th of June. It's nice and bright out here, even though I think because for some reason I'm in shadow. But anyway, let's pray as we come to the end of another day. A beautiful day here in London. It's just gorgeous uh, just sunny and nice not hot just just right all right let's pray oh god make speed to save us oh lord make haste to help us that this evening may be holy good and peaceful let us pray with one heart and mind as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Our glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. And our psalm this evening is uh, Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Of course, I'm reading from the prayer book. It has a refrain and a prayer at the end. So it will be slightly different, of course, from in the Bible. Psalm 11. First, the refrain. The Lord's throne is in heaven. In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird to the hills. For see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string to shoot from the shadows at the true of heart. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold his eyelids try every mortal being. The Lord tries the righteous as well as the wicked. But those who delight in violence, his soul abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. Scorching wind shall be their portion to drink. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. And those who are upright shall behold his face. The Lord's throne is in heaven. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. God of heaven, when the foundations are shaken and there is no escape, test us, but not to destruction. Look on the face of your anointed and heal us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. One of the things I love about this psalm is, is, is that just at the very beginning, it says, In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to the hills? In other words, I have taken refuge in God. So how can you tell me to run away and hide from my enemies? God is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. In other words, God is in charge. It's a great psalm to meditate on, sisters and brothers. God is the one who is in charge. Therefore, I will not fear my enemy. I will not run away from my enemy. Don't tell me to flee like a bird to the hills when I have taken refuge in the Lord, the one who sits on his throne. And he, and he rules righteously. All right, let's, let's leave that there because I'm preaching on the psalm and I won't have time to preach on the other bits. <laughs> So um, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's say our collect for this evening, Wednesday evening. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, now, um, our, our Old Testament reading, our first reading, is from Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8. From verse 1 to 29. Joshua 8, 1 to 29. Yeah, all right, let's read. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do it to Ai. You shall do to Ai and its kings as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night with, their, with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you be on the alert. I and all those with me will advance on the city. And when the men come out against us, as they did before, we will flee from before them, from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city. For they will say, they are running away from us as they did before. So when we flee from them, you are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it into your hand. When you have taken the city, set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it, you have my orders. Then Joshua sent, sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent that night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered his army, 
and he and the leaders of Israel marched before them to Ai. The entire force that was with him marched up and approached the city and arrived in, in front of it. They set up camp north of Ai with the valley between them and the city. Joshua had take, taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai to the west of the city. So the soldiers took up their positions with the main camp to the north of the city and the ambush to the west of it. That night, Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at a certain place overlooking the Arabah. But he did not know that an ambush had been set against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled towards the wilderness. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them and they pursued Joshua and were lured lured away from the city not a man remained in Ai or Bethel and who did not go after Israel they left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel which is a um, terrible military strategy and the Lord said to Joshua Hold out towards Ai the javelin that is in your hand, for into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out towards the city the javelin that was in his hand. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set it on fire. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising up into the sky. But they had no chance to escape in any direction. The Israelites who had been fleeing towards the wilderness had turned back against their pursuers. But when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that smoke was going up from the city, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. Those in the, in the ambush also came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the middle with Israelites on both sides. Israel cut them down, leaving them neither survivors nor, nor fugitives. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the wilderness where they had chased them, and when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed those who were in it. 12,000 men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. But Joshua did not draw back the hand that, had, that held out his javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and plunder of this city as the Lord had instructed Joshua. <clears throat> so Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a, des a desolate place to this day. He impaled the body of the king of Ai on a pole and left it there until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered them to take the body from the pole and throw it down at the entrance of the city gate. And they raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains to this day. It's quite violent, isn't it? Now, this is what Joshua is about, sisters. And brothers. Remember, from the very beginning of the book of Joshua, we are told that Joshua is going to be a warrior. And, and, and his, his task is to take the land and to fight against the enemies of God in the land. And that's what he's doing. And it's quite brutal. War, warfare is there is never war war was is never something uh, it's never something good. War is always brutal. And ancient in the ancient world, war was even more brutal. Because when they capture a city, they 
utterly destroyed. Today, today we wouldn't, we wouldn't, um, you know, human rights and all that wouldn't allow us to utterly destroy a city, and 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 so on. But in those days, in the ancient Near East, um, war was a horrible, horrible thing. Um, taking a city. Uh, means you you destroy you completely destroy everything in it, including livestock. And 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 you know God, that was the command from God, really. And and and, and there are lots of reasons for that, but part of the part of it was 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 that they needed to cleanse the land of all the pollutants and all the evil and all the wickedness of these other people that were there. Because this is what they were, they were, they were consecrating the land. But in order for them to consecrate the land, they had to get rid of their enemies and totally, not just partially, but totally. And then the land will be dedicated and consecrated to God with the people of God living in it. And so it, 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 it was a brutal time. And so when we read these things, sisters and brothers, we must not... On the one hand, we must not judge these things by 21st century standards. Because, uh, let's face it, even, even in the Middle Ages, war was more brutal than it is today. Um, I mean, you, you know, so, so it's only recently that we have things like the Geneva Convention and human rights and all of these things that stop us from being brutal in war. But, when you when you go against your enemy you your 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 intention is to annihilate them to utterly destroy them and that's what they did and Josh, joshua had the, the, the that task was a, it's not an easy task but that was a, that his job was to 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 be a commander of the armies of the lord i mean um if you remember when he met that great angel in chapter 2 who had that great massive sword and he called himself the commander of the armies of the Lord <clears throat> it was a symbolic representation of what Joshua was going to be he was going to be bearing the sword and he was going to represent the commander of the armies of the Lord as the earthly commander of God's armies and that was what the angel was ba was basically saying to him you are going to wield the sword and you are going to command men to wield the sword against god's enemies and utterly destroy them and so we have the city of ai remember it's the same city that they did not destroy the first time that they they, they beat them the first time because because there was sin in the camp with achan now that achan is being judged summary judged and executed um, that sin is gone and now we need to they need to um, eradicate the other sins that are in the land which are the the pagan nations that <clears throat> that are in the land and of course a lot of these pagan nations sisters and brothers were, were, were detestable in their practices they offer child sacrifice they they, they did all sorts of horrible things that God did not approve of. And God's, God's answer was utterly destroy them. Get rid of them completely from the land. And, um, and, and as I said, it, it's, it's a brutal thing. But that was how it was. And we might not like it because of our own 21st century sensibilities today. And, um, and so on. And, 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 and rightly so. But that was how war was in the ancient world. As I said, even up until 200 years ago, it was just as brutal. Um, maybe even 100 years ago. Uh, uh, before we have things like Geneva Convention, human rights and so on, that we have in the, 20th, in the 20th century. All right, let's leave that there. Moving forward. <coughs> we, our New Testament reading is uh, Luke chapter 11. <coughs> Luke chapter 11. From verse 1 to 13. Luke 11, 1 to 13. 
Luke 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. All right. So, um, Jesus is teaching on prayer. And of course, this is, this is a classic um one of the classic texts we we have a, a an abbreviated version of the lord's prayer in matthew's gospel we have the full version that we that we normally say today but here we luke gives us an abbreviated version father hallowed be your name your kingdom come give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation and it finishes there but then Jesus goes on to, to teach about um, persistent, persistent prayer. The, 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 the point of this story, this little parable about the friend who visits a friend at midnight asking for bread, is, that, is, is, is to be persistent in our prayer. You know, sisters and brothers, we give up too easily because we don't see the answer. Because we don't get what we want we stop praying we give up on our prayers but jesus is teaching us that we are not to give up praying we are to ask and keep on asking we are to seek and keep on seeking and we are to knock and keep on knock knocking the the the, the, the point is the the, the 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 more we persevere in prayer is the more likely we will receive the answer that we are that we are that that we are praying for, the answer to our prayer, and and sometimes we know sometimes it seems we are praying for the same thing over and over, and it seems like nothing is happening. You know, we've been praying for the war in Ukraine for over a year now, and it seems like nothing's happening. But keep praying, don't give up have that shameless audacity because jesus says it is those who keep on doing it keep on seeking keep on knocking keep on asking that will receive the answer to their prayers so that's the first point prayer must become persistent we must not give up just because we do not get what we are asking for uh, the first time or so on 
be cons be persistent keep knocking on that door uh, keep bombarding the door of heaven keep bothering god <laughs> you know keep bothering god with the situation you know god doesn't get tired of hearing you know god is not like the guy who said don't bother me god is not like that but Jesus is teaching us that we must be like the other fellow who just will not take no for an answer. We'll, we'll keep banging the door until Jesus says he won't get up because of his friendship, but because of the man's shameless audacity. Because he refuses to give up, he will get up and give him his bread <laughs> just to get rid of him. <laughs> Because this guy's never leaving. I got to get back to sleep. He's not going to go away. Just give him the bread. Get rid of him. And Jesus said that's how he's going to get what he wants. And he says that's the kind of persistence we must have in prayer when we come to God. But the second, the second point is that when we come to God, we are to come to God as a father, as a child seeking seeking help from a father remember he started by saying when you pray say father now that's that is the key to our prayers sisters and brothers we are our prayers are based on family relationship god is a is a loving caring father and he wants the best for us and so when we come to him in prayer we are coming as on the basis of the fact that I am a child seeking help from my father who loves me unconditionally and wants the best for me. So Jesus said when a father, a child asks for a fish, he doesn't give him a snake. If he asks for an egg, he doesn't give him a scorpion. God does not give us that which is not good for us. That's the first point. He doesn't give us that which is not good for us. So, so if you turn that around, if the child asks for a snake, will, will the father give the child a snake? No. If the child asks for a scorpion, will the father, a loving, caring father, give the child a scorpion? Absolutely not. So Jesus is saying, that God is our loving Father and He will give us that which we need and that which is good for us. He's not going to give you something that is not good for you. If you ask for egg, He's not going to turn around and give you scorpion. If you ask for, for, for fish, He's not going to give you snake. And neither will He give you a snake if you ask for a snake as a child. So, sisters and brothers, keep praying don't give up you may not see the answer now but don't give up prayer must be persistent you know we've been praying 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 you know i know i know i know people who have prayed for years for decades for something and god eventually bring that thing to pass you know i know a woman who prayed for 40 years for the salvation of her husband and God eventually saved that man to the point where when he died, it was a glorious funeral service to celebrate his life in Christ. After 40 years of prayer, uh, don't give up praying. We are praying for the people in Ukraine. We're praying for an end to that horrible, horrible war. And we've been doing this now for over a year. Praying that God will judge Putin and bring him to his knees and change his heart and tr convert him and change his ways so that he will think of love and peace. But it's not happened yet. But let's not give up. Keep banging on that door. Keep asking. Because God will eventually hear, bring, bring about bring about the answer that we are desperately seeking he won't give us a scorpion if we ask for fish or egg he won't give us a snake 
He will only give us that which is good for us. And so sometimes we pray for things that's not good for us. And we don't get it because God says, that is not what I want you to have. I, want to, I will not give you that because you're asking for a snake. I won't give you a snake. I will only give you that which is good for you. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, thank you, O oh God, we thank you for this message of prayer, this truth about prayer. Lord, that we are to come knocking, come asking, come seeking, because you are a loving Father who cares for us. And you want the best, you want the best for us. So Lord, we come. We come with our own thoughts, we come with our own needs, we come with the needs of our own lives and our own family, our church, but we come with the needs of this world. And we ask, Lord, for your intervention in our world. We pray for an end to wars. We pray for an end to, uh, to violence in our world. We pray, Lord, that you will intervene on behalf of the Ukrainian people and bring an end to this, this devastation in their land. Lord, we pray that you'll bring peace to Ukraine, peace to, this, to Sudan, and wherever there is conflict and violence in our world. We pray, Lord, our God, that you will intervene and bring, bring peace. Bring an end to war, we pray. God of the nations, whose kingdom rules over all, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Shed abroad your peace in the hearts of men and women everywhere, and banish from them the spirit that makes for war and conflict that all races, peoples, and nations may learn to live in peace as members of one human family and in obedience to your laws through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray for those who are on our list and our prayer focus in our own church. So we continue to ask God's mercy and grace of healing and strength upon these, his children, members of our community. So Lord, remember these in your mercy and grant healing and strength to broken bodies and mind, we pray. Remember Doreen, as she celebrates her 40th year <laughs> working for cancer research. Thank you for her. We pray that you will be with her and strengthen her in body and mind. Jean and Walter and Monica, Dion, Sue, Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, Jean Murphy, Johanna, Hannah, Pat and Ray, Pauline and Mom Daphne, Muriel, David, Suryakala, Thelma, Veronica, Monica, and daughter Cheryl, Una, Charity, Pippa, as she prepares to, to undergo chemotherapy, Duke, Radcliffe, and Pauline, uh, 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 his wife Pauline, and Catherine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> We continue to pray for, for the world, and for the leaders of our world. Lord, we pray for those who lead and govern our world. We pray that they will govern so that we will live in peace and in harmony with one another. We pray that you will guide them as they make laws and make decisions each day that benefit us, we pray, Lord, that you'll give them 
the wisdom to make righteous laws and righteous decisions that will be of benefit for all your people and not just a few people, not just for the rich and powerful, but for the poor, for the marginalized, for the foreigner, for the stranger, for the child, for those who are on the margins of society. We pray, Lord, that they will, that we will live in a society where all people are treated equally and there'll be no favoritism and that those who are poor will, will, will be lifted up by your grace through, through government programs and policies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Renew your church, O oh God, for mission and service, and make her here and everywhere a living fellowship of your spirit revealing your love to the world, reconciling humanity to you and with one another, serving all who are in need for the glory of Christ, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. And an evening prayer. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May may your holy angels dwell with us in peace and may your blessing be always upon us through jesus christ our lord amen guide us waking o lord and god us sleeping that awake we may watch with christ and asleep we may rest in peace our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord grant you peace and rest from the anxieties and worries and fears of this world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers. <laughs>